What's up guys? So today we're doing a very easy original cocktail of mine called a hummingbird. And if you guys have been watching this channel for a little while, then you'll know that sustainability has kind of been on my mind quite a bit recently. So uh, with sustainability in mind, um, I made this mango syrup uh, for this cocktail. Uh, and I, I did it with an immersion circulator. So I'm gonna kind of describe that for you and then I'm gonna tell you how to make it without an immersion circulator. But basically, an immersion circulator uh, is something that cooks uh, something sous vide. So basically what that is, is you put it in a pot of water, you put this little stick heater in there, you tell it what uh, temperature that you want it to heat it up to, and then it heats it up to that temperature and then keeps it at that temperature evenly. So that's really, really nice because you can make syrups pretty rapidly. So instead of like, coating something in sugar and letting it sit in the fridge for 48 hours. You can actually do it in like two hours, which is really nice. So what I did basically was I took a mango, I cut it up, peels and all. I uh, didn't use the seed, but I cut up all of the, the meat and the, and the peels. I put it into a plastic bag with half a cup of sugar, and then I vacuum sealed it, um, and then put it in a sous vide, and I let it sit there for two hours, and it created this beautiful syrup. The thing is, is that when you're done with that syrup, okay, you're gonna have the solids of the mango left. So there's two things you can do. You can make something with it or you can throw it out. So instead of throwing it out, I decided that I would take that mango, uh, the mango meat, not the, uh, the skin, mind you, but just the meat, uh, put it into a blender, blend it into a puree, uh, add another quarter cup of water, quarter cup of sugar, make sure that everything is combined and pureed, and then I put it out onto a cookie sheet and I uh, basically dehydrated it at my oven. So I basically, my oven can go down to uh, 140 degrees, but most can go down to about 170, which is fine. And I just left it in there. I spread it out nice and evenly on a pan and I let it sit in there for 12 hours and it created this really nice fruit leather. And I made like a nice little garnish with the mango fruit leather. Now I said that you don't wanna use the peels for the fruit leather because I found something out about mango peels. Mango peels have a specific kind of toxicity to it and a lot of people are allergic to it because it is in the same family as poison ivy, which is crazy, I did not know that. So I didn't want to tempt fate and give myself a big rash and a bunch of bumps, especially now during uh, quarantine time when anything that goes wrong, I'm gonna be super paranoid about. All right, I, uh, let's get into making this cocktail. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna do three eighths of an ounce of our mango syrup. Uh, so in the bottom of this measuring cup jigger, that is exactly three eighths of an ounce. Uh, then we're gonna do three eighths of an ounce of honey syrup. It's basically a daiquiri variation. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then we're gonna do two full ounces of the Florida Cogna four year extra seco. Now here you can do this with any white rum but I'm really like the Florida Cogna specifically for this recipe because it is so dry. It has like this fruity dryness to it that, you know, something, so other rums that are more robust in flavor might kind of take away from this particular cocktail. So we're gonna add our ice to our tin. Add our cocktail, give it a nice shake. I'm assuming we got some good aeration there. Yes, we did. And then we're just gonna give it a nice little strain into our glass. Perfect wash line, by the way. Just wanted to point that out. And then I'm gonna take my little fruit leather garnish. I got one of these little clippy guys. And I'm just gonna, maybe I'll just post it up like that. Bam. Does that look nice, Marius? Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice, right? And there you have it, the hummingbird. Let's let's sip on this bad boy. See how it tastes. Speaking of honey uh, honeybirds, hummingbirds, I have one in my yard that mm -hmm. keeps visiting. And one day I was watering the plant and I was like, what, what, what is that? And it was like something that came in my peripheral and then it came over and then it hovered in the air and it drank from the water hose as the water came. Oh, really? 
and they tried to land on the water a couple of times, but it's like, ah, I can't do that. And then they just <laughs> kept drinking water from the We hook. have like several hummingbirds in our backyard. But you know what's crazy is that one time I'm outside in the yard with the kids and I'm seeing this thing that's 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 flying like a hummingbird and it's going to all of the different, the flowers that are out there and going like this. You know how they do? They go like this. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's not a hummingbird. That's a moth. And sure enough, there is a hummingbird moth that that is exactly like a hummingbird. It flies just like a hummingbird. It has a big like snout just like a hummingbird and it drinks flowers just like a hummingbird. But it was like this, and it's huge. It was like this big. It kind of freaked me out, but it was really cool at the same time. And I just had to share that story with you. Weird. Yeah, it's never weird, heard of that. right? Was it colorful, like a hummingbird, or was it? it? I think it. I mean, if memory serves, you know, it has. But I, honestly, I really think you should just put a picture right here for people. Oh yeah, that's. But true. Uh, if, we already did that. <laughs> <laughs> but if memory serves, it was kind of a kind of a rust and black color. And that's how I knew it wasn't a, because like on a closer look, you know what a hummingbird looks like. It looks like it's a very like kind of sleek design. You know, they're very aerodynamic those. But this thing looked like kind of hairy and kind of weird. And I was like, that's kind of a weird looking hummingbird. And then I was like, wait a minute, that is not a hummingbird. And then I had to look it up. And sure enough, there is a hummingbird moth that acts just like a hummingbird. But how amazing is nature that you can have a bird and then you can have a moth that's almost the exact same thing as the bird. It's crazy. Yeah, that the bird is as small as the moth. That's right, the, or the moth like like evolved to mock the bird or something. I mean, moths just fly around and drink flower like nectar. So, so it's kind of the same thing, but it flies. Dude, I got to show you. A, you got to look this up yeah, because it's, it's incredible. Hmm. Um, so let's get into the tasting notes of this because everyone's like, oh, that was a weird aside about hummingbirds. Uh, but I guess not too weird because, you know, we are drinking a drink called a hummingbird. So what I really like about this drink is that you would think that the that the the honey would kind of overpower the mango. And I guess you would be right if you use certain types of honey. But if you use like nice clover honey or wildflower honey, it is going to it is going to add sweetness, but it's going to support the mango flavor very well, which is really nice. And then, you know, we you did three eighths and three eighths. So that's three quarters of sugar syrups, right? And then three quarters of that to balance it out, right, of the, of the lime. So you get, it's tart, but it's like, you know, it's balanced with that sweetness. You get that nice mango. But what kind of makes this drink is the dryness of the Flor de Caña. And the Flor de Caña also has sort of, of I would call it like a light, almost peach-like flavor to it, but very dry. So it's not going to run over those, those, those light kind of mango and honey flavors. Um, really nice pairing of flavors, I do say so myself. Just gonna pat myself on the back there for a little sec. I'm gonna take another little sip because it's so good. And coincidentally, the uh, the garnish kind of looks like a moth. Hmm. And the garnish kind of looks like a Look at that. It all kind of plays, plays into one another then, doesn't it? So there it is, guys. This is like a really nice, light summer sipper. The Hummingbird. It is a daiquiri variation. I hope you guys like it. I don't have really much more to say about it, so I'm just gonna say if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon. Check out our YouTube memberships. We got them here too, and they're pretty cool, and they give you some pretty cool perks, but well, the greatest thing about it is that when we do our Monday live stream, uh, when you type in your questions or you wanna hang out, I can see them a little bit more prominently uh, than everyone else's, so I notice them a little bit more and answer those questions or comments or interact a little bit more, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to, I, I got a nice new Staggerly apron. So if you want to check out staggerlygoods.com, type in barfly SLG 20 at checkout and you get 20% off your entire cart and they make these awesome aprons and some other pretty cool things. So I don't know guys, I guess I'll see you guys on another time.